think that's meant to say five to five in the morning. Um, yeah, it's a pretty crap day. There's the van in all its glory. Nice wet day. Yeah, there's my golf. Um, that's the longest project I've ever had. Um, I bought it about 15 years ago. Maybe longer. I'll have to, I'll have to look into the how when I did buy it. But basically, I bought that so my son could learn how to fix cars. All the basic stuff, you know, brakes, um, oil changes, servicing, um, all them sort of things. Oh, Dexter, Dolly, what's this? See if it's cool. Oh, yeah. What's this? There you go, Dol. Dexter. I don't want it to. Go on, go on, Dolly. How was your eyes today? I'll put some drops in in a minute. One more. Good, good lad. Billy, you want one? Good girl. Still raining. I hate days like this. But, gotta get on, haven't we? Morning, welcome back to the channel. Um, hopefully you're enjoying what we're doing. Our first video went out yesterday. So in today's video, it's basically uh, stripping out the van. I don't show any of that footage. Um, I didn't say the point of recording it. We all know what the inside of a builder's van looks like or a joiner's van looks like. So I haven't recorded any of that. I've recorded what I found it and found, found it. Found underneath um, a couple of rust spots, uh, some places where the PU bonding had failed um, on the excuse me dry road, where the bonding had failed on the panels, so where it's sandwiched together, um, the glue had either missed or it's come away over the years. So that was one of the issues. Um, also. We're going to cut out the holes in the side of the van for the windows and show you all the steps required for that. Um, we'll leave the bulkhead in for now. That's to stop any of the nice stuff in the cabs getting damaged. We need sparks and filings and bits of grinding. So, hope you enjoy. Um, I might tag a couple of other little jobs on at the end of the video. Um, we'll see how we get on. Thanks for watching. I've been driving this van for the last week now. I'm really impressed with it. There's no bangs or rattles, and the roads near where I live aren't of the best quality. They're, uh, they're rural, they're bumpy, rattly, but this van's took it all. I've even taken it over the fell a couple of times. It's fantastic. Um, I'm very, very happy with what we bought, and I think it's gonna make a perfect motorhome. There's a few bits of bodywork that need attention, but we'll we'll deal with that later on. Um, for now, I'm going to basically concern myself with with getting on and getting the majority of the van built, and it can be painted at any time. So let's get on, get these windows in. So, before installing the window, unpack it all, get it out, make sure you've got the right one, there's no damage on it, and this one here is still packed up, so I'll remove the packaging and we'll have another look at it. So, we've got the window up now, all the packaging's off, 
clean, there's no marks on it, no damage, I'm very happy. To enable you to have a perfect opening for your window, I come on the inside and by these spars, these strengthening spars, I drill holes. This lets me know where the double skin areas are. I'll also drill in the corners. This area here that I'm pointing out is where your trim fits, your knock-on trim. What I do is I, once I've got the window out, I'll put a sacrificial trim on there and when I mastic up, it won't, it doesn't matter if mastic sticks to it. So when I rip it out, it'll bring that little bit of mastic with it. I use a cone cutter to make the holes. It's quick, it's easy. And if you need to make a bigger hole for some reason, um, maybe you just want to put something through it, cone cutters are brilliant. Masking tape has a has a double use really. As you can see, I'm lining it up with the top of the holes. I know then that I've at least two two millimeters of metal on the other side away from where I'm going to put the knock-on trim. It also protects your bodywork, paintwork from any hot 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 bits of metal that are going to come out when a jigsaw, and also from the bottom of the jigsaw. The piece that you're taking out, you don't need the mask that up, but the metal work that's remaining needs some level of protection. I always leave the plastic foot on my uh, my jigsaw as well, because this this will it kind of deters metal from getting stuck underneath. If it was a metal to metal surface, it would I think it would let metal filings go underneath, and these would in turn scratch your paintwork. So I always try and mask out where I want to cut. It's a good guideline. I leave the double skinned areas where the supports are for my last cuts. This leaves a bit of strength in the panel and you can keep all of it, still cut it and it doesn't drop down and damage your bodywork. So that's the opening for the side of the van. It's now been deburred, primered. Um, before applying the primer I give it a, a rough up. Put a grip pad, just a, a, little, a little scotch bike pad just to give it a key and um, we'll give that 10 minutes to go off I'll start going and prepping the bond in now little trick put the tubes in hot water for about 10 minutes before you use them and then uh, while they're warming up you can prep your glass get it ready to stick on and away you go you also need to etch the painted area on the back side of your window this will need primed as well, and this will give a good solid surface for your sealant to stick to. This is a sacrificial trim that I'll remove later. It just makes life easier, to be honest. Um, if you have any mishaps or get sealant on your trim, you can. it's coming out anyway. So it just makes a tidy job. Even though I'd soaked the sealant in hot water for a long time. It was such a cold day when I did this that it didn't take long for the chips to cool down and my arm was aching when I finished. Next van I do, I'm buying an electric uh, sealant gun. It will have so much easier.
put the windows in. We've then decided that we're going to give the interior a good go over. Check for all the uh, niggly bits that need repaired. This is where a little bit of water has been coming up through the wheel arch. Obviously when they've put the screw through they've missed the plastic caps and that's allowed water to, to make its way in. It's got damp behind there and just sat. Um, there's the leaky clips that sprinters and crafters are renowned for. So we've got a job to do on them because we have insulation going in that area. So we don't want them leaking in either. It's very dusty like I say when we, when we stripped it out. It was, it was sawdust everywhere, you know, we've swept it a couple of times but it just keeps coming. And this side looks looks bad but it's not that bad really. We treated it with a bit of crust again to the hole there where a the screw was but you can see that screw hole was rusted so obviously water's been getting in and contributing to that surface rust and that's all it was surface rust so after a few hours we, uh, we got the back of the van looking pretty clean and there was a few hidden horror stories this stuff here it looks to be like grip fill it actually took us I would say the best part of a month to get it all off Over time, these strengthening spars, which are on the high top part of the van, have come away. And when we did a bit of further investigation, we found other areas in the van where they come away as well. So we went round, and basically every joint, we used uh, a PU sealant. Um, I think we used Tiger Seal or Sticker Flex EBT Plus to glue these back. Um, I want the van to last me well, at least 10 years, so worthwhile doing these little jobs now it'll get rid of any annoying rattles it'll strengthen up the vehicle as well it just you know adds a little bit of more strength to it these light areas you see around the van where we've treated them for rust this is a product called crust you apply it we give this two, three coats of a space of the weekend and you rub it back and paint directly onto the top of it. So this is obviously hasn't been painted yet, but it's ready to paint. It's basically that's classed as a primer. This area here is where the seal and come away. Um, don't know how but somehow water got behind it so we, we've removed the sealant. We're going to treat that with crust and then we're going to paint it, well reapply sealant and then paint it. That'll be as good as new. The holes will get filled on top of the uh, wheel arches because I won't be using them again and um, I won't be drilling any holes into them. So when I've removed the ply lining from the van We've noticed quite a few areas like this where the paint's rubbed through um, and there's a few high screws. So we're going to dress these all back and we'll paint the, the areas where the damaged paint is. We'll tap all these screw heads back and make them good. Um, it's just where self-tappers have gone in and pulled the metal out. But it has distorted the metal in a couple of places so a light tap back with a hammer and that'll make that job good again. Again there's a cable here. This is the beggar's belief that you run 90% of the van cables inside the van and then this one here for the back lights runs right over the top of the back doors. So a good couple of hours work removing the lights and pulling the cables through. So that's a job I'm going to do and it'll tidy that back door area up really nicely.
when we had a look around the back of this van, we realised there was quite a lot of areas that needed a bit of a bit of, a bit of paint on top of the primer where it was rubbed through um, a few bottle scars. So went to my local garage. Um, the guy there mixes paint. He's really good. So got several cans of this paint mixed up and uh, got cracking. There was a lot to do, so. We're going to speed up the video so you don't have to sit and watch it all. But if you look at the floor, just something to point out. There isn't a lot of paint on the floor, so uh, I don't know why the factory doesn't paint it. But when we when we are painting these parts, you'll see a big discrepancy. And that's just because there is no paint on the floor. There's plenty of primer there, just no paint. I find it strange. There's a lot of things about VW and um, Mercedes that I find strange. You know, like the leaky clips, obviously they're aware of it, but they just do nothing about it. Maybe they need to wake up and listen to the people. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. It is really easy to put windows in. A lot of people panic about it because, you know, you've got a hole in the side of your van. But as long as you've got the right tools and you've done your research, watched a few YouTube videos, you shouldn't have any problems. Remember, seal up any metal that you've cut with uh, either primer and paint or silicon, basically. That'll, that'll do the job. Um, make sure you get a good seal on your primer, make sure you etch the surfaces that you're priming before you do it and um, that'll give you silly, yeah, silicon, your sealant something to bond to and basically that's what stops leaks. So if you've liked today's video, click like and subscribe, click the notifications so you don't miss any more. I'm going to start trying to work my way through the backlog of uh, videos that I've got and We'll put a couple up in a, a week, I think. Um, got a lot of work to do elsewhere as well, so we're doing the van, doing the videos, I'm working from home. I've got a lot on the plate at the minute. So if you click like, I'll keep putting them out there. Thank you. See you again.